All right. So today, what we're going to do is let me just write like something. So I'll say last desktop. All right. So today, uh, this is thirty-nine twenty-one, week five, lecture three. So today, we're going to go through uh, VGA and interrupts. Okay. Just example. So VGA is basically what is called as the char buffer, and interrupts is basically. I mean, both of these are HAL, but this is, I guess, Altera HAL, okay, hardware abstraction layer. That's the only writing I'm going to do. So I'm not going to post this online, this PDF. But uh, basically, before that, I've gotten a couple of proposals, like I was addressing right before class started. They're nice. I like the project proposals. So if there is a team of two, right, I recommend one of you work on one component. Let's say there was a proposal for um, a Pong game based on the D0 accelerometer, right? So that involves basically using the VGA, and it involves using interfacing with the accelerometer. So one person works on one part, the other person works on the other part. But that doesn't mean both of you should not talk to each other. You should, okay? Because and that's how, like as I was saying, that's how in industry disasters happen. That you have teams working and they never talk to each other. They assume things and yeah, bad, bad, bad. Right? So you got to be very clear on the interface, and we'll talk about it over the next uh, five weeks of class. And that's point number one I made. Point number two I made is you don't want to do anything from scratch in the sense you don't have time. It's not that you can't do it. You just don't have time. So, for example, let's say you were talking about this um, VG and interrupt. So what I did, so if you go back, I mean, if you go to the website, so I sent you this link. So if you go under 3921 weeks four and five NIOS example, there is the tutorial so I've also posted this DE1 NIOS interrupt and VGA. So this actually, this doesn't actually works on the DE1. However, like I sent you in the email, the C code, I, I could include the Java Eclipse project. It just didn't compress, right? So I had to make a new project from scratch. I'll try to do it today. But anyway, I put it on the desktop. I unzipped it. So here it is, okay? And actually, Created another directory. I need it. Oh, this temp. Take this. Cut it. Uh, remember, you have to paste it to a folder that has no space, a path name that has no spaces in it. And anyway, in my case, see, uh, users, Muthuswami, desktop. So it's got no spaces in it. All right. Just be careful of that. Okay, so let's just open up this project and take a look at it from scratch, right? So again, there is the hardware software co-design. So what I'm going to show you first is the hardware, okay, in QSIS. And then we're going to look at the software. The software, if you will, is the more uh, involved portion of this design, in my opinion. So let's just take a look. Okay, so come on, quick. Let's see, should I create the software project in the meantime? No, I'll wait. This will ever start up. So while it's starting up, let's look at the top of Okay, so it has started up. There's the subsystem. So it's opening up. So basically, it's telling me that since I... I Use my desk, my Mac, oh, my Windows emulator on the OS X, and I have 12.0 of quarters. It'll upgrade it automatically. You don't have to worry about it. Okay. So here's the hardware. Okay, this should be standard. There is clock here, NIOS 2. Okay, I always use the fast version. And anyway, I'm not gonna. I don't have a mouse, so I'm gonna double click on it. On chip memory, and like I said, you have to use the SD RAM. Okay. For all your projects, you really can't get anything done with on-chip memory. I just have like four kilobytes of on-chip memory connected to the data master uh, because this will help me um, basically. Oops, not the instruction master, data master. Okay, so it'll help me um, store like arrays and some other stuff, some of the more quicker access. 
the SysIDs, SDRAM controller, their standard, timer, JTAG, UART. Now, in this case, we need to make sure that we are, we are going to we do this anyway, but for this design, especially since we're using the timer interrupt, we need to generate an IRQ, okay? And of course, from key in, I also generate an IRQ. Now, in this example, uh, does not re does not show you how to use interrupts on the key in. It does show you how to use interrupts on the timer. And if you look at choose book, it's very uh, the, it's your course textbook. It's very um, similar. Okay, he actually has it in there how to do it. So I'm gonna just cover the timer interrupt. Right. So these are all standard. Okay. Any questions on any of these? So don't worry about the university program clock, but the, this clock, NIOS2, on chip memory, SDRAM controller. SysID, timer, hex out, in this case, key in, and then JTAG UART, right? So any NIOS2 project you have should have the clock source block, right? It should obviously have a NIOS2 processor. I use the fast version. Uh, it should have on-chip memory. I use four kilobytes. SDRAM controller, system ID peripheral, uh, timer, JTAG UART, and hex out, okay? Standard. Key in is specifically for this. Now, actually, another core you should put in when you use the SDRAM controller is this university program clock signals, okay? So if you go in here under university programs, there is clock signals for the DE1, yes? So what I do is once I add it, let's see, I don't know if I can open this. So let's go into edit, so control E is there. So once I add this, I have two clocks going out, all right? One is for the SDRAM, okay? And the other, in my case, since I'm using the VGA, I have the video clock going out, right? If you're using the audio codec, you're gonna have the audio clock with the appropriate frequency, yes? So you don't even have to use an external PLL. You can use this. And again, the university program core can is not installed by default, if you close quarters, I mean, if you close everything and if you go uh, Google search for Altera University Program, University Program Installer, here it is, okay? You choose the right version. So if you install this, you will get this, okay, this little university program here. So I would put the clock core in. So now, so here are the connections, right? So the clock output now goes, so this usually goes to your processor, et cetera, right? Instead, it's gonna drive this university program core. You see that right there, yes? The reset is also going to drive the university program core. Now you have, in, in my case, you have three clocks coming out. One is the system clock, which is going to drive the NIOS, the on-chip memory, the SDRAM controller, the SID peripheral, that's your 50 megahertz clock, yes? Then your reset, of course, is gonna drive, from the university program core, is gonna drive the resets of all the peripherals. However, the SDRAM clock is not going to drive anything in the sense it is exported out, you see that? So you're gonna take this, uh, signal, if you look at the HDL example, here is the SDRAM clock, yes? I'm going to connect that at the top level to my DRAM clock. Let me look at that. So at the top level, you have this DRAM clock port, yes? And I'm gonna connect that to my SDRAM clock port, okay? So that's my 50 megahertz clock phase shifted by three nanoseconds. It's been taken care of. So going back to the system contents, so you can ask what kind of clock runs this SDRAM controller? Well, that's the sys clock. Is that clear? Any questions on this? Yeah, it's a protocol. So that's taken care of right here, 
Okay? So now, the university program, the reason why I needed these clocks is for the SDRAM. Again, you can put an external face lock loop. I did that a couple of weeks ago. In this case, since we need the university program for the VGA clock anyway, and I just put the SDRAM clock in there as well. Now, what I'm going to add further from the university program is I'm going to add a character buffer, okay? So if I want to write characters on the screen, I use character buffer. If I want to draw pixels, I use the pixel buffer. So you go into audio and video. You go into video. So here it is, okay? The character buffer for VGA display. That's what I'm going to add. And I've already done that. So it's down here. So character buffer for VGA display. So the clock input is going to be my system clock. Okay. The reset, because this is also running at 50 megahertz, right? The reset is going to be my reset as usual from the university program core. Now, basically, this is a memory mapped core. Okay. So the first thing you need to do is you need to connect this. If you look at it, hopefully this comes out very well. So I'll just go back up. So it's connected to the data master of my NIOS 2 processor. Okay? So you see that? That's what these two dots mean. Okay? There is a control register and there is a data register. They are both connected to my data master because what my code is going to do, well, we will see what Altera's code is going to do, is it's going to write, um, it's going to control the behavior of this core and also write data to it through the data bus. That's it. Okay. It's not instruction master because it's not executing any code. All right. Okay. And then what it's going to send out, the output, it's basically a stream, which you have to write to the VGA. Okay. So it's a streaming source. It has to get connected to a Avalon streaming sync. Okay. So for example, you can't connect a streaming source to a memory mapped slave because it's not compatible protocols. Okay. So let's look at how to configure this. So I put this in here. I hit Control E. There is actually nothing to configure, right? If you want, you can enable transparency. It's all you have to choose is obviously onboard VGA DAC. Okay, you don't have the touch screen LCD. So that's it, right? Everything else is taken care of for you. So note the info. Character resolution is 80 by 60. 80 columns by 60 rows. Cancel this, so I'm not changing anything, right? Now, what kind of sync does this go to? You cannot directly connect this to the VGA controller because the VGA controller is running. So let's talk about the VGA controller. Notice the clock here is the VGA clock, yes? From your clock's uh, core, the VGA clock is running at 25 megahertz which is what your VGA controller is running at. Yes? Which one was good? The clock? What was connected to what? VGA core. No, the VGA core is not 25 megahertz. The VGA clock is 25 megahertz. The VGA controller expects the input clock to be at 25 megahertz. Right. So is that clear? Now, since this clock is at 25 megahertz, but this clock, notice, is at 50 megahertz, they're kind of on different lines, yes? You need to place a FIFO between them, first in, first out, to synchronize data transfer. That's very simple to do. In the sense, in the university program core, uh, where is the FIFO? Dual clock FIFO, there it is, right? So just stick it in there. So on the input end, notice how the clock is your system clock. Yes, 50 megahertz. That's because the input 
is coming from oops sorry the here is a 50 megahertz clock to my dual clock fifo notice the input is coming from my character buffer here is the source the streaming source it's going into my streaming sink yes and then what this does is this sources into the vga controller sink yes so it's very simple in the sense that the input is right here it has its own clock the output is right here and notice the stream out clock right here is the 25 megahertz clock yes so the input is the 50 megahertz clock the output is the 25 megahertz clock so you have a 54 place between them that's it okay so if you look at this guy uh, recall that we looked at the vga character buffer with dma there's nothing to configure here except you obviously have to choose the right output if you go in here the dual clock 54 buffer the thing you got to do is you have to use 10 bits color uh, plane i think the default is 8 uh, 10 color bits and 3 planes all right and it'll actually tell you in the sense if you go in here the vga controller which is the output see it actually tells you right you need 10 bits and 3 planes if you try to by default i think this the dual clock uh, 5 the buffer the 54 by the way I just copied the dual, I mean, I just added the dual clock 54 and I renamed it, okay? You see, notice the description is dual clock 54. Dual clock 54, yes. But I think the default is 8 bits per uh, color uh, plane. And if you try to connect it to this VGA controller, which expects 10 bits, you'll just get an error. And you can fix the error simply by making this 10 bits. That's it, if you believe it or not, right? So it's that's all the connections are. Now what you do is you export this conduit, right? That is the VGA controller. If you look at your HDL example, so here is the VGA controller, okay? That's the only conduit you export in the sense this FIFO, this uh, character buffer for VGA display, they all exist within your NIOS subsystem, which is accessed, and these cores are utilized by your C code. Okay, there is no reason for you, for the user, to know about this. It's an abstraction. I mean, you can export the conduit, but you're not going to gain anything. Right? Is that clear? This is your hardware. That's it. Okay. So let's say you are using the accelerometer. Oh, by the way, obviously, if you go in here, choose the right board. And choose the right like connector like you don't have any of these other peripherals okay now let's say you are using the accelerometer on the d0 let's see where it is here accelerometer spi module your d0 also has an adc controller by the way right so let's just add this for the hell of it and see i've never added this so let's see what it does documentation and give it some time come on right, let me just go in here let's see if i can open it up damn it there's plenty of time What's the path? Uh, IP, university program, uh, input output, uh, accelerometer, doc. Okay, let's take a look at this. For those of you who are using the accelerometer on the DE0. This document describes the Altera University Programs IP code that can be used to access the accelerometer peripheral. And so this tells you, right? So serial bus, instantiating the core, software programming model. So here it is. Okay? SPI read, read X axis, read Y axis, read Z axis. Very straightforward. Okay. 
the heck is this? Let's see, there's another one. Oh, this is the data sheet probably for the ADXL. Ah, very nice of them. Yes, it is. Huh. There it is, the data sheet itself. Right. Okay, I'm not going to add this, obviously. All right. But see, that's how easy it is. Oh, yeah, the D0, I didn't realize this, also has a NAND uh, ADC controller, which you could, I mean, you could do some ADC projects if you want. Um, there is the PS2 controller, like I was talking about, right, which you should use for a keyboard or mouse input. Okay? But any questions on the hardware? So if you're going to use VGA again, you need the dual clock FIFO. You're like, hey, why don't I clock my NIOS with 25 megahertz? Well, this expects 50 megahertz. So yeah, just uh, this is the recommended Altera. The, this is the design practice recommended by Altera. And there's a reason for it, okay? No, don't save. Okay, that's it. So let's look at the software now. So it's on C colon, users. Desktop, 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 there it is. Okay, like I said, the software, I asked to software, I do have the C code, so I'm not gonna open this up in Eclipse. Um, I, I usually call the .c file, which has the main function, main.c, okay? You can call it so anything else you want, and if let's say if you have another, uh, if you have a bunch of C files, which you should, okay, in the sense, when you design your pro, when you work on your project, now again, this is a practical digital system. So you should have like your own header files. You should have separate C files, ideally for your um, PS2 controller, for your accelerometer, for example. You put it in the same C file. I'm not going to take off any points, but it's not good design practice. Okay. All right. So let's now look at. Uh, so this is a little uh, involved code. It's a good example of C, in my opinion. So here is my. Um, main function. So there are two things going on here. One is I'm going to write a character to the VGA core, right? And if you remember from lab a couple of days ago, that's the first thing I did. Remember, I got it to work. And then I worked on the timer, right? Uh, I think Jason was in uh, lab when I was trying to get it to work, and it wasn't working right. And the reason it wasn't working right, since Jason was there, is I forgot to do this. And it's in Chu's book. I forgot to clear the timeout register. That's why my period was off. Okay. And it it's in the appropriate reference in Chu's book, chapter whatever, 13, the timer core, it's there. Right? It's even in Altera's documentation. So I went home and took me like five, ten minutes to figure that out. Okay. So let's look at though how to use the VGA core to write characters onto the character buffer. To write characters onto a screen. So the first thing I do is I declare a pointer to this type, okay? And information about this is again, if you let's see, did I close QSIS? I did. So let me fire that up again. So remember, I clicked on documentation when I opened up to configure my course. So that's where the information is. So let me, since I cannot open up the documentation from QSIS anyway, let me just go in here, go in IP, uh, let's see, do, oh, oh, not alter, not alter, I don't want alter. I want university program. Still initializing. So if you go into audio video, uh, if you go into video, for example, go under document, so here is video.pdf, so let's just look at it. So here is video IP core descriptions, for example. You want character buffer, and it's got timing, it's, it takes 5,000 clock cycles to initialize, but the screen movement is much slower than that, at 50 megahertz when our clock input is, it's not a big deal software programming model, so here it is, okay? Okay? Now, something important. Altera and 
any other company, they keep changing their designs a lot, right? So they may not have time to update the documentation. So what I recommend you do is, I recommend you look at reference designs like, like mine, right? And also their own reference designs, which you can again find under, if you go into the Altera folder, 13.0, if you go under university program itself, if you go under examples, you can find it, right? So what I do is I use these PDFs as a guide to understand like how this works. Yeah. And then for the actual code, I look at reference designs. Because you won't understand the code if you don't understand this. So notice it says, hey, wait a minute, there are two resolutions, right? 50 by 30, 80 by 60. But if you read this, it'll say, oh, on the DE one, you can only use 80 by 60. That is for the VGA, you can only use 80 by 60, sorry. This 50 by 30 is for the touch screen, the external touch screen, it says it here. Oh yeah, here it is. For LCD with touch screen, it's 50 by 60. I can zoom in, right? So here it is. That's why you have to read this. If you don't read this, you'll be like, wait, why can't I use the 50 by 30 for VGA? You just can't, all right? Can you go inside their core and modify it? Yes, you can, but I don't recommend you do that because you, again, don't have time, all right? Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, we're in the code. Again, I'm not going to open it up, uh, open up the documentation in the sense you go in here to the character buffer, okay, and you open the documentation, you will see this document, okay? It's got information on all the other cores as well. It also has information on how to use your pixel buffer. So we go under getting started, for example. So basic video pixel display, it shows you. Again, this does not mean it's a step-by-step -step guide. It's the closest you will get to a step-by-step -step guide. And the reason why we make you go through this is this is how you will get documentation in industry. All right. Question, Connor? Okay, so let's go back to the code. So, the first thing I do is I declare a pointer to this type, okay? How do you know where this type is? Here it is, okay? So in Eclipse, you can open up this file. This is HAL, Hardware Abstraction Layer, which Altera gives you. You can open it up and look at it if you want. But it's, uh, I would recommend actually you look at it. It's not that bad of a code. It's written pretty well. So it's all memory mapped, okay? They declare a pointer and they just write to that uh, base address and base address with an offset. That's all they do, right? And it's, uh, that's actually described in here. Where is it? Come on. Avalon's RGB, video out software pro. Here it is. So, Character buffer register map. So if you write to offset zero of your base address, which you get in system.h, okay, you're basically writing to the control register. Okay? But you don't have to do that. You can use the wrapper course. I mean wrapper functions, I'm sorry. Okay. So let's look at this line by line. Don't worry about the context for now, and right? I'll talk about it later. Here is how you initialize it. Alter up uh, character buffer open. So one thing which is a potential source of confusion is the name of this device usually is given in system.h, okay? That comes with your board support package. However, the issue with this particular device is it has both control and data, yes? So the name of this device is actually you get from your QSIS module. See, this is the name of the device. Video underscore character underscore buffer underscore with underscore DMA underscore zero. Yes? So go back in here. It's exactly what I open, right? Notice I check for null. And if you read the documentation, it will tell you it will return null, right? So if it's not null, I initialize the character buffer. We'll look at that shortly. But notice how I say uh, error could not open character buffer. And this is printed out on your NIOS console, okay? Because I have the JTAG UART, this message, and I just stop the program because th there's no point in me running further, right? Because my entire thing is based on the VGA display. If I can't open it, 
then you have to go back and figure out what's wrong right yeah don't get frustrated with this because it does take time that's why we are going to, we are making you go through this so you basically understand hardware software code design and you start becoming good c programmers right so any questions on this code okay all right next let's look at the car buffer init function so here is init i pass in a data type of type a pointer to character buffer device okay and then i clear the buffer and then i print a string at x coordinate 20 y coordinate 60 which is the top of the screen right okay and again all these functions are described in this document from altera very straightforward right so what i recommend you do for those of you i think pretty much all of you are doing a vga for your um uh, project get this to work first right do not proceed hold on uh, question hold on do not proceed till you get this to work yeah Hold on, I'll address that later. We're not talking about the interrupt yet. Right. Good question. So the interrupt will talk next. We'll probably extend that into Monday, which is fine. Right. But is this clear? So just print something, hello world, onto the VGA display. If you can't print that, that means you should not go further. Right. So you should do like step by step debugging. That is module by module. Okay. Actually that's about it for the character buffer in it right now we are going to get into the intro so let's address jake's question first of all how do you know it's 1 millisecond uh, uh connor's almost right yeah good but how do i the clock speed is 20 nanoseconds right where do you get 1 millisecond from more specific you're getting warmer so where did you see this one millisecond that's what i'm asking you don't know where we set this we set this somewhere it's in the timer core configuration remember where is our timer there is here of course let's like look you don't have to do this count thing right let's say you want a one second interrupt just change this to a second Okay. I just use like uh uh let's say you need multiple interrupts. I mean multiple uh timer interrupts at different periods, okay? Just have different timer modules. So think both hardware and software, right? But of course the priority matters. So a lower number has higher priority as usual. Make sense? So don't like think oh I have to do everything in software. No, just add an extra timer. who cares right it'll have a different name so that's where the soft processor uh don't say soft core processor for obvious reasons right so say there's soft processor or hard processor hard ip all right this is a soft ip so you're like i you need another timer and unlike your atmega nothing against the atmega right just add another timer you need another pio just add another pio go into your hardware that's the power of this okay So you can have two ISRs, one for each timer, for example. Make sense? So you got to think a little differently. All right. So uh, that's where you get the one millisecond from. Is that clear to everyone? All right. So how do I now make an interrupt service routine? You have to do three main things. Okay. Number one, you have to register. the isr number 2 you have to enable the isr okay number 3 you have to write the isr is that clear again this is like i i kind of love this because it's like hardcore c right this kind of separates the men and women from the boys and girls right so this so you guys will become well if you don't already know how to do this this you will become experts at this all right so here is how you register the isr now something important in the hal 
the latest version of HAL, which comes with 13.0, is slightly, keyword being slightly different from 12.0, which is what Chu uses. I have used the 13.0 functions just for difference sake, because your book already has 12.0. The main point is the name of the function is different, if you notice. right? The syntax is pretty much the same, except you basically have to add this extra interrupt controller ID. Because basically, the NIOS can have two kinds of interrupt controllers. Right. One is an interrupt. One is an internal interrupt controller, which is what we are using. You could also have an external interrupt controller. Okay, we are not going to use that. In lecture, I'm not going to cover that. If your project requires it, I don't think it does. Okay, because the only reason you would need an external interrupt controller is, let's say, you're using a PIO to connect to your GPIO to connect via your GPIO, let's say, to an Atmega processor for some reason. That is, you have an external hardware peripheral that generates interrupts. Then you need an external interrupt controller. Make sense? There is an interrupt controller that is part of the NIOS subsystem, but that's connected to your external module. Exactly, a touchscreen, like Tim Jacobson says. I don't think even the touchscreens, they generate interrupts, actually. I take it. I don't know, but that's a good example. No, let's say you are using the key, like I am. Forget the switch, because the switch is not debounced. I can use the inter internal interrupt controller, even in the case of the timer or the key, the one that comes with the NAS processor. Make sense? External interrupt controller is basically an external chip that generates interrupts, which is usually found only in processor systems, like hardcore, like where you need, like basically uh, when you have like hand not not handshaking, when you basically have multiple processes running need to assign priorities. That's in, in my experience, limited experience, that's where it comes in. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. All right. But even that, you can get away with probably like just PIOs. As long as you're clear on the handshaking. All right. So. Yeah, you can just... Uh, no, you can just have like a start bit, like just like your other, if you look at protocols, right, serial protocols, you always have a start bit, like remember your PS2 keyboard, you send a reset, and then it acknowledges. So you just agree on that, okay, this is what I'm going to do. Right. Interrupts is basically like the name says, it's an interrupt. It's like, okay, this timer is periodic, talk, 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 talk. Yeah, that's why. Like, that's right. So Tim is like, uh, basically, it will be constantly polling. That will be an issue when you have multiple processes. Remember? So that's where, yeah, you're right. That's where an interrupt will be useful. Okay. Mm -hmm. So by the way, this is not the only way to do this. I was just that's why I paused for like five seconds. Another way to do this is in the timer core itself. There is something called um, timestamp, right? So it executes a function periodic, I think it's called timestamp, I forgot what it's called, right? But it's basically an interrupt, the poor man's interrupt. So I'm like, you know, instead of doing that, let me just show you how to use an interrupt. Right. So again, three things, register the ISR, enable the ISR, write the ISR, okay? So let's look at registering the ISR. I use another reference here, there's a good website. I just Google search for Altera timer interrupt example. And these guys use the latest how, uh, functions. So it's alt underscore IC underscore ISR register timer IRQ interrupt controller ID. Where do I get all these um, pre-processor directives? These are actually defines, okay? They are in system.h uh, 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 alt IRQ Oh, interesting. I didn't include system.h. I should have included it, right? But it's the system.h that's generated from the board support package, okay? We'll look at this on Monday again. The complete uh, design. Right. I'll generate it on my tablet and we'll go through it. But let's just, how much time do we have? We got only like four minutes. So let's just wrap it up by looking at the high level view, right? So you give it the interrupt controller ID, you give it the timer, timer IRQ, you give it the name of your ISR, and then you give it what is called as a context. The context is how you pass arguments into the interrupt service routine, okay? And we'll talk about this on Monday. This is reserved 
the last input to the register. So it's zero, zero, okay? Don't put anything else there. And then that's register. Then I enable it, okay? So let's now look at the ISR itself. Where is it? Here it is. Here is the ISR. So we'll talk about this on Monday. But the most important thing about this ISR, at least the timer ISR, is you have to clear the TO flag. Now, remember I was telling you you can write to the control register instead of using their functions? This is how you do it. It's called input output write. What is the base address? What is the register offset? And what do you want to write the data? That's it. Okay. Again, we'll look at this on uh, Monday. But for the timer itself, this is very particular that you have to clear the TO file, right? But again, in general, for using interrupts with the NIOS, there are three steps: register the ISR, enable the IS, register the ISR with the interrupt controller. That's the exact thing. Second, enable the IRQ, right? Third, so let me fix this in the sense it's register IRQ with, in, with interrupt controller. Enable IRQ and code ISR. Okay. So these are the three steps. Now, for the timer in particular, I don't think I have to do this for the key you have to clear this TO flag, right? Maybe actually even for the key you have to do it, I don't remember. But we're talking about timer. That's the particular thing about the timer. But the general thing about the ISR is A, you need to keep it as short as possible, but more important, you need to make sure that these functions can run within one millisecond, okay? So remember, how long does it take to write to the Character buffer, you remember we looked at it? To clear the buffer, how many clock cycles? We just looked at it earlier in the lecture. Huh? It said 5,000. So let's say you have a doubt between 500 and 5,000. If you want to make a quick calculation as an engineer, what would you assume, 500 or 5,000? 5, 5,000, just to be safe, right? But then you don't, you just make a quick calculation, you go back, you don't assume that, right? You have to verify it. And this is actually, this is only for clear screen, okay? This is not for writing the string. However, clear st string writes space to 80 by 60. So intuitively, you can assume if you're just writing like 10 characters, it's going to take less than 5,000 clock cycles. So 5,000 is a good assumption to make. So what you have to compute, and I already did this in my head, that uh, this is 5,000. What's the worst case time? Is it less than one millisecond? Or you're going to have interrupt stacking up, right? So a general rule of thumb is you avoid floating point and printf's inside C interrupts. They are too slow. Okay. Never ever use floating point inside interrupts. Even if you have a hardware floating point in it, they are just too slow. I mean, I, I, I'm assuming your interrupt is like practically fast. If you have a one second interrupt, then most likely you can do floating point inside. Depends on your application, but as a general rule of thumb, people avoid floating point and printf's inside interrupts. Okay, that's about it for today. So what I would recommend you do, for those of you starting, well, you better start the project. First, get the, um, time is up, but if you give me like 20 seconds, get the SDRAM controller up and running, and get the VGA code to go, the character buffer. Even if you're not working on the VGA, because it'll give you a good idea of how to utilize this HAL, ultra HAL. Yes, question? I mean, no, that, all that means is don't do this. Unless you're absolutely sure. No, you don't define a water global variable. You just don't use floating point. Because if this was floating point, this takes a really long time, right? Especially you don't have a hardware floating point unit on your NIOS 2. No, ADCs are not. Uh, yeah, 
Yeah, that's right. But you don't have to use floating point for that. You can use fixed point. Look, if you can get away with using floating point, use floating point. Right? But it's not industry practice. They use fixed point. But yeah, especially for your NIOS 2, because your NIOS 2 doesn't have a hardware floating point unit. But let's say you're designing a game and you really have to use floating point. There's one, all right? There is floating point hardware that you can add. But let's say you don't add this and you start using floats, it's all software emulated. It's gonna be extremely slow. Yeah. All right, so I'll meet you Monday. That's about it.